This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com, and today I'd like to do a demonstration on MAP times RPM versus mass airflow. This is our picture of a standard engine. This is your air filter, and you can see the mass airflow right here. It's in the intake manifold where all air passes through it before the throttle body. And here are your basic sensors for a speed density calculation, which is calculating the mass of the air in the intake manifold and how often the cylinder goes up and down and pulls a known quantity of air into the cylinder, or at least a calculated quantity of air into the cylinder. A few years ago, when we were putting together a new race car, we decided to go ahead and mount a mass airflow into the system. This is the air intake where the light bucket used to be. By the way, this is a road race car. And what we did was built the air box. Here is your air sensor, intake air temperature sensor. Here's the mass airflow. This happens to be a mass airflow out of a Ford Lightning, which is essentially making about 500 horsepower or at least the equivalent of 500 horsepower airflow through the motor, it uses about 100 horsepower to drive the blower for a total uh, wheel horsepower of about 400. So this thing is quite a bit oversized for a 150 horsepower motor. That is done so we don't get a pressure drop across the mass airflow device. Then we have a smooth air intake made of uh, fiberglass going to the throttle body down here in the corner. In the Megasquirt world, duty cycle is the duty cycle at the injector. This includes acceleration enrichments and that sort of thing. So what I want to do is create a calculated field that filters out the acceleration enrichment. So what I can do is come down to, I've got quite a few custom fields. I've blown that custom field box uh, for the sake of the demo, what we're going to do is create a new one, a new custom field called duty cycle base. And then we're going to use the formula 100 times open brackets, the square brackets, duty cycle one. This has to be typed exactly as it's coming to you in the data log, divided by the fuel colon Excel enrichment. That is a field that I log in my high-speed data logs. What this formula will do is take duty cycle, say 70%, and divide by 107%, if that's what your acceleration enrichment happens to be, then you'll get a new number. I multiply by 100 to get the units to work, and you get a new duty cycle that's the base before acceleration enrichment. So now, here we're looking at the data of this car. In the red is RPM. You can see he's coming up a straight, downshifting, probably downshifted a little too far because he's down around um, 3,800 RPM, pulls that gear, shifts, pulls the next gear, pulls down the main straight, and a few downshifts. You can see the map go to close to 100% KPA when he's full throttle. And you can see it drop to about 20 or about 30 KPA on the downshifts. What we did is rescaled map times RPM on this second trace and compared to that to the mass airflow. And notice the white and red lines are virtually identical all the way along. We were a little surprised to see that the first time until we started thinking about it if you double your RPM, you're pulling in twice as much air. If you double your KPA in the intake manifold, there's twice as many air molecules. So it makes sense. MAP times RPM will give some sort of logical response. We were a little surprised it was almost identical to mass airflow. At the bottom, we're using this duty cycle that's reported by the ECU and comparing that in red to the duty cycle base that we created with this new formula. And what you'll see is these white spikes every time the acceleration enrichment comes in. 
Next, we went into scatter plots and we plotted map versus RPM that virtually everybody has in their data logs. Compared that to map times RPM in the X, in the Y, duty cycle base, and in the Z, we are entering AFR. Next, under the third box, we're using math, duty cycle base, and AFR. So the colors on all three are the same. Notice that essentially we have exactly the same curve. We might be able to use that for something. So now you can see my use of data filters, where I have used AFR out of range, low EGL corrections, non-racing RPM, that gets rid of the idle around the pits, pulling through the pit lane, that sort of thing. Anywhere that the rev limiter is active, I turn off data, start up and warm up, and uh, transitions MS, which is basically any time the engine code is something other than one, meaning just running. There's no acceleration, no warm up, anything like that going on. So now, this is basically the same screenshot as I had before, but in color is manifold air pressure in all three. And look how there's a very definite pattern where when there's high map load, meaning full throttle, the map times RPM and the mass airflow show almost identical results. Now is the same screenshot where the color is RPM racing. Basically, that's from 3,500 RPM to 8,200 RPM as the color. And again, you see almost the same pattern. The only difference is you can see this slight variation as you're going through this critical map times RPM of about 5,000 up through about 6,000. You also see some fuzziness in the mass airflow. These things, mass airflows, are not gospel. There is some sort of resonance going on in the intake manifold that if you were using duty cycle, if you were using your mass airflow to create duty cycle, you'd get some real inconsistencies in this area of the power band. If you were using speed density as a calculation, at least you would get a repeatable result. I've plotted as a color volumetric efficiency. And if you notice, it goes from a low volumetric efficiency at near low power up through the very highest volumetric efficiency at full power. I get a slight drop off right before redline, but essentially both graphs are identical, except in this questionable area and speed density using map and RPM to predict duty cycle appears to be more consistent for this motor. This happens to be a completely different motor. This is a roughly 300 horsepower jet ski. It is supercharged. You can see that it's pulling about 175 kPa up here at the top, which is about 12 pounds of boost. But look at the map times RPM versus the injector duty cycle. You get virtually a straight line. We see this effect on most turbocharged motors. We also see them on well-behaved uh, open plenum like a typical V8 motor. The big exception to this rule is ITB motors, and we'll get into that in a separate seminar. Let's get into the same plot, but let's talk about this little spike right here. We are looking at duty cycle versus map times RPM. And look at the way you get a big spike on every shift. What that is, is the Excel enrichment coming in. And you can see it right here. I'm reporting the Excel enrichment as a percentage add, and I'm getting into the 150% add range on this motor. So now, this is where it gets fun. That is exactly the same point I showed before, but now we're zoomed way in. You can see at the bottom, between the white lines in this white area, is we're only talking 0.13 seconds. 
Here's the shift where he's running along at full throttle. He lifts out of the throttle as indicated by the map. Manifold air pressure. You see the RPM drop. The entire shift takes about three tenths of a second. As he gets back on the power, you can see the Excel enrichment, the difference between the red line, which is the duty cycle base, and the true duty cycle, it has added quite a bit of acceleration enrichment as viewed in duty cycle. You can also see in this graph, this is the map times RPM versus the mass, and look how much faster the map times RPM responds than the mass airflow. In this trace, what we've got is each spike is an engine cycle, so that you'll see the entire acceleration event happens in about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, happens in about seven cycles of the engine. You can also see the AFR trace. And if you notice from the time that I lift out of the throttle or this person lifts out of the throttle till the O2 sensor responds is pretty close to this same amount of time. That is the lambda delay that we often talk about. You can also see that same delay happen here where the O2 sensor responds after the shift. Down at the bottom, I have a special field set up, and it'll be a different seminar as to how I set these up. But the yellow is when the acceleration enrichment is active, and in the blue is the percent add that we are doing during that shift. This is a different but similar motor. And what I'd like to show you is how this guy is coming pretty close to hitting his target AFRs. On the left is the actual AFR that we're getting. On the middle is the target AFR called AFR1 target. Notice across the top, it's pretty much a consistent green color. You got a lean section here, a little leaner, a matching target area. And there's a little inconsistency down low, but for the most part, we're generally hitting our targets. On the right graph, what we're looking at is the same map and RPM as our axis, but this is the EGO correction. He has EGO correction activated almost 100% of the time, except in the downshift area. But notice how it's a little red, little blue, a little up, little down. That's nearly perfect. So now let's take the same two shots on the left and center, but on the right, do map times RPM. You will notice there's generally a straight line up through here until he gets to high horsepower up here at the top. You notice that it rolls off. What that is, is he's probably getting past his power band for the shift. If we take the same scales, but now we're looking at two plots, we're on the left is map and RPM and volumetric efficiency. I've got the volumetric efficiency set from 60 to 88. And notice how the volumetric efficiency is very high in this area and then drops off. That's at the same place you see that curve at the top where the volumetric efficiency is rolling off and the duty cycle no longer continues to climb. I would like to take a moment to thank my friends at tunerstudio.com the guys that develop Megalog Viewer HD and Tuner Studio. Megalog Viewer is used for viewing this data. Tuner Studio is what we use to tune the motors. DIY AutoTune that supplies all these parts and pieces and the AMP EFI series of ECUs, normally referred to as MS3 Pros. I happen to be using an MS3 Pro Ultimate and MSExtra.com where I spend a fair amount of time. I can be contacted at Whittle Beast. And you can also contact the programmers and a lot of other people that know a lot about this stuff. Thank you.